Hey everybody, this is Rebels of Cloud 9, and I thought I would do a, kind of a collection video showing off a bunch of those uh, B-17s and other models around my dad's studio. Um, I showed it briefly in the Memphis Bell video that we did, or that I did rather, and um, this is just a large collection of our monogram kits that we've done over the years. Um, I really love monogram Rebel kits. They're very good detailed. I think and they're very good price and quality for everything that you're getting you know you're, you're really getting a good deal with them uh, and I, I, they're fun to build you know they've got a lot of history to them um, built some kits that were you know 40 years old and wow they were still better than some of the kits that are out today so it's just a good testament to the uh, quality built back then so I guess to start with Start with the recent newcomer to the group. This is, um, these are all 48 scale. Most monogram kits are. There's a few, uh, you know, oddity scales, uh, 30 second and a couple 70 second. But I love 48 scale. It's a lot of detail you can put in without, uh, without the model being really too big, um, if you can say that. Then this is one that my dad did. Uh, we bought the Memphis Bell and the B17 at the same time. Uh, B17G that is, um, and I bought it so I could have the parts out of the G to put into mine, and um, he built this guy, let me just spin her around here, so this one has been hit, and <laughs> my dad just had, I would say, too much fun building this thing, he really liked building the feathered prop there. Um, I airbrushed the smoke trail on there, and like I said, my dad just, he, to, to do that, to put all the holes in it, he just, he was having an absolute blast. Uh, he built the, whoops, I should go back, he built the bomb bay open, which is a little bit of a difficulty to do because the plastic's pretty darn thick, and it did weaken the, the structure slightly, and you can see it trails down into the, uh, tail there with the bullet holes. The uh, decal is uh, the Meat Hound and um, it is the alternate B-17F decal that comes with the Memphis Bell kit. So up here this is the P-51 Mustang. This was the first model video I ever did. This was um, inspired by basic modeling to you know I watched his videos and I thought it would be just fun to try and I did and I just had fun with it ever since. So that was the first one there. Here's a B-17G Superman. Uh, Superman was originally an F model, but one of my favorite superheroes, so I thought, why not? If it was real, I'll put it on. Uh, nice little P-38 Lightning. Very old kit, but still pretty darn good. I think it came out in 68, if I remember. Or 67. That's a... Um, P-51D that I painted as a Tuskegee. It's very high up there. I can't get a good enough angle of it, unfortunately. That was a lot of fun to do. That one came out in 2003, I think. And what's really odd is the P-51D is still a better kit than, than the B model. And this one here, I have to walk around. I'm navigating around some very, very large tables. This is the visible B-17. Um, one half of the fuselage is clear plastic. Um, this, this was built by my dad. And uh, he didn't like that. So he taped off areas of it, you can see there. And only bits of it are visible, you know. The uh, right and left waist gunners. And the radio operator, like I said, it's hard to see. Because they're all up pretty darn high. See like the bombardier and the cockpit and all of them. And here's a whole bunch of P-51s that we've been collecting. Some of these are Revel monogram. Uh, one is a chrome. It's actual chrome. I have no idea where it came from. And uh, a bunch of others are New Ray. They're um, a Chinese company that likes to make a bunch of airplane. You know, kind of. They're kind of like models, but they're toys. You do have to assemble them. 
and uh, we bought them because they were they're cheaper than spending fifteen dollars on a monogram kit. My dad wanted a whole bunch flying up there. And uh, this is the first B17G that he that we built. We built this one pretty much right after we built the Memphis Bell years ago. When I was, I think we built this one when I was about six. And uh, it's always been flying up here with us. Uh, this is the first one that I built. I was about 14. Um, this is the first one I ever built on my own. I wanted a Memphis Bell for a Christmas present, but we couldn't find it because they didn't make it at this time. But they made the G kit, so I kind of reluctantly went with it. The nose art on it is a little funky. It has a, a card of a queen, and that was supposed to be something else, but I never finished it. And I left it there, and then one day I bought a, a Queen album, um, and I saw the lettering and I really liked it, so I just wrote it on there. I don't know why. They're my they're my favorite band, so why not? And this is another one that I built. This is the only one that we have. Like I said, I got to navigate. That has a Cheyenne turret, and this tail was on a lot of the, the G models. Most of the G models have, or all of the G models have this one here, which is the older style. But um, one of the new features of the chin was they also improved the tail and it was more um, maneuverable from side to side and I think up and down too. Um, and it's pushed back more towards the tail and it's an alternate option kit that comes with the um, the visible B-17 down there. And the visible B-17 also includes uh, a crew. They're the only ones to do that um, unless you're buying a B-24. Here's the original Memphis Bell. And I've got to step around again the other way. So there, the it's the first one my dad and I built when I was very young. I think he airbrushed it too. I'm pretty sure he did actually. And this one here is an F, another F model. This was built, I think this is actually an original first edition when the, the bomber came out as an original model kit. Um, this was built by my, uh, it was built by my brother's friend, but my brother Older brother painted the nose art. That was a long, long, long time ago. And here we have a B-26. And this is kind of an interesting story. I started painting the interior for this. He wanted me to paint the interior, but my dad wanted to build the rest. And it's a very attractive looking um, color scheme on it. And the B-26 has a very kind of important significance to my dad is because it bombed my dad's hometown in Germany when he was three years old. He was out uh, with my grandmother and uh, all of a sudden the uh, sirens went off to duck for cover and uh, he got separated from her and uh, a German soldier covered him with his trench coat when the bombs hit and he actually got hit by uh, phosphorus and um, he was, he was burned by it. He still has some of the burns um, down his arm. And I think he said they used to be on his chest, but they went away um, in recent years. But um, it's just kind of weird that he wanted... This, was, this used to be all in his hobby room, all these planes on the ceiling. But he wanted the uh, Bombay open. And um, he, put it, uh, or he put it right above his chair. So if you look straight up, he would see just this Bombay glaring down at him. And um, he never he's never given me a reason, a solid reason for why he did it. Why he wanted it right above him. So I may never get an answer, but what the heck. And lastly, we've got, or not lastly, but close to lastly, we've got two B-24, no, two B-25s. Those are just some Mitchells we've built. Um... Super Fortress, this is the mammoth of all Revel kits um, in their 48 scale line. It is a mammoth, massive beast of a, 
of plastic. It's kind of amazing that they produced it. And we are planning to gut this out um, and replace it with a, a Bell X1 kind of dropping off the bottom. It'll look really cool. And lastly, this is lastly this time, is the B24. It's not one of our favorites. Um, this is the D version. It has the um, greenhouse nose. I just got the B24J, which has the turret. And so I'll be building that one pretty soon and adding it to it. I want to get a couple more B24s and more and more B17s. This is what it looks like. When you're standing, I'm almost at the back of the wall of the room here. So they're really fun. We love building these things and hanging them up. And my Memphis Bell will be going about here in between those two. Um, but not yet. So I'll show some other stuff just briefly. These are a bunch of um, DR1 model kits that my dad has been building over the years. This is a paper uh, paper one here. Revel, Revel, these are their 128 scale, I think. These are some more New Ray in 32nd scale. Uh, Revel, 72nd scale. And these are some smaller Revel ones that come in a box. Um, they don't make those, they don't bring those over here, but my dad has brought them from Germany when he's gone back to visit relatives. So, you know, you kind of kind of look at them like this as they're slowly going away. A lot of people like it. They think it's a lot of fun. And I think this is a Santa Marina. This is just kind of an art project of my dad's that he's done. Uh, paper model Hindenburg. I th no, sorry, Graf Zeppelin. Whoops. My dad's favorite uh, form of building models is paper models because that's what he learned on when he was younger in school. They actually taught that in school. These are um, G-scale engines. Some more engines up here. And these are the uh, Mi 262s, which is my dad's favorite airplane. Oh, gotta get that out of the way. And they're on an intercepting course for all the B-17s. It's hard to show all this because this is a, a stained glass studio. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've had a lot of fun um, showing you this. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to, to display all of these guys. And there will be probably many more B-17s up to about this section of the wall. <laughs> We've still got a lot of space to go. So again, thanks for watching. This is Rebels of Cloud 9 signing out.